welcome to Lizards of the Coast. And what do we know about goblin engineers? Well, like a lot of engineers, sometimes they don't do things the correct way. In fact, uh, in their frustration, they may break things and uh, simply use uh, the objects they break to make more goblins, which is what we have here today. A nice new budget deck, and we've already tested it a little bit, and I almost think, uh, well, I'll explain, but I think this deck has some real good potential, just like uh, sometimes that is better. I think we can open up a whole new budget area here. Now, I will say this deck is, we'll call it artifact whack, or goblins breaking things, or we can break our own stuff, whatever. Um... This deck is about breaking artifacts to do things, whether it be damage to our opponent or creating the goblin tokens. And look at that one. He's a nasty guy. Look at him getting those rabbits. But little do the rabbits know, slippers, rabbit accoutrement there, very bad, sir. So, without further ado, let's just get into it here. Let's get our creature base here. Now, there we go. A lot of decks... Um, there's good archetypes, and I like to build my decks around those. And I think 8 Whack is a great archetype. Um, not just for budget, but I think you can do good things. Like my, dy my Dino Storm deck is kind of a whack. So, we need some free artifacts to, to get our wax going, right? As it were. So, Mem Knight. We have 1, 2, 3, and a 4 Mem Knights. And remainders of Mem Narc. Mem Narc. Rain still scur across Mirrodin, reminiscent of his form, if not his power. So, a Memnite is a zero mana 1-1. One, one. Um, by its very nature, it has value. We have Ornithopter, a zero flying zero two. Um, it flies. We have a way to give it a little bit of action. We're having four of these, because it's zero mana. Now, here's an interesting addition here. Signal Pest. Look at that. Look at that little remnant of Memnarch's bad dream there. Has Battle Cry. Now, what is that? Whenever this creature attacks, each other attacking creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. So that's good. That is going to bump up our little gobbles. That is going to bump up our Ornithopter and our Memnite. And Memnarch is pleased. It leaps from tree to tree, revealing the enemy's positions. And uh, what's funny, it can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. But it itself is not flying, right? I mean, you could just say that Signal Pest has flying. But I don't know. So, four of those. And now for the whack. So, here's Whacker 1. And this Goblin Bushwhacker is a great card. Uh, that kicker cost is real reasonable when Goblin Bushwhacker enters the battlefield. If it was kicked, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain haste until end of turn. That is absolutely brilliant. So one, a two, a three, a four. So here we have the Goblin Pile Driver. Protection from blue. That's important. Whenever Goblin Pile Driver attacks, it gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn for each other attacking Goblin. So if we have six Goblin tokens attacking, we have a seven, two. And it has protection from blue. So that is good. We have one, two, three of those in the main deck, and that's sometimes sideboarded um, just because the pile driver is a great card and it finishes games. But if we're not going to get something blue, we can sideboard one. Wouldn't hurt. So, but a play set of them is good too. I mean, I have a play set in there, so I like them. We have Reckless Bushwhacker. Now, this is actually my favorite of the Whackers because this is the one I use in my Dino Storm. Because it's a uh, Dino Storm is basically a green with a little bit of red. So it's kind of like a gruel white. So, with this being a mono red, this Whacker is just here for that surge cost, just as like a secondary. So, in this deck, Reckless Bushwhacker is not near as good as Goblin Bushwhacker. But in Dino Storm, boy, howdy. So we have four of these. All right, so now let's talk about what, what are we going to break, okay? We, we want to break some stuff. Let's talk about what we're going to break here. All right, in there? Sure. Why not? All right. So we have Chromatic Star. 
Now, another card you could run instead of Chromatic Star, and I think I have it right here, so I'll just go ahead and show you guys. Um, here's some options in this, and they're real good ones. So, you could run a Soul Guide Lantern, okay? But I like this tap and add one mana of any color. This is put into a graveyard from the Battlefield Draw card. Why do I like Chromatic Star better than this? Right there, because I tap and sacrifice it to draw a card. This, I can sacrifice to my whack. And when it enters the battlefield, or from, when it enters a graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. So we sacrifice this, we're going to draw a card. Um, now, let's talk about this other one. Uh, certain variations, uh, a little a bit differently than this one, but other decks similar. I see run this experimental synthesizer, and I ran four of these, went down to two, and then I switched them out for the two chromatic stars. Um, what can I say about the synthesizer? Uh, it's good. Enters the battlefield, leaves the battlefield, exile that top card of the library until end of turn. You may play that card. That's okay. Um, I guess I'm just not, I don't see the value that Chromatic Star has. I mean, it's a good card, but it's not quite fast enough for what we want to do. Because we don't care about that so much. Um, so two of those. Uh, another Chromatic Star could go in there. These are kind of our sideboard sideboards of things we were thinking about. And, uh... To stay in budget, even, um, I'll show you a, a card you can go even more budget. But that being said, um, just had to hold up the show there for a second. Sorry. All right. So, Chromatic Star. One, get that mana, gets in the graveyard. We get to draw a card. That's value, sir. This is somebody that understands the value, the value of a product. See here? And our product is Chromatic Stars and Mishra Bobbles. So we have all these wonderful machines, and goblins don't know how to use them. They just want to break things. So our Mishra's Bobble, that's a free spell. We love it. Um, it's some card draw. So Chromatic Lantern, or I'm sorry, Chromatic Star, um, gives us some card draw on top of that. And Mishra's Bobble is free. So this... I'm honestly more concerned with sacrificing Mishra's Bobble, not necessarily for that peak at the top of the library. Um, I'm wanting to sacrifice this for my goblin tokens or to deal damage. So let's talk about what we do there. Let's talk about that department, shall we? All right, so we have Gleeful Demolition. This is one of the best cards to be printed in the last few years, I think. Destroy Target Artifact. If you controlled that artifact, create three 1-1 one, one red Phyrexian Goblin creature tokens. Now, why is the Phyrexian Goblin creature type important? Well, uh, standard players would chime in. Um, I am not a standard player, so I'm not real keen on the standard metagame. But I believe that uh, there's Phyrexian like uh, banner cards that will pump up Phyrexians. Similarly, um, like the Signal Pest, I think there's Phyrexian versions of that in uh, that Phyrexia, the new Phyrexia set that uh, came out yeah, last year. So I think that was the thing. Like, that's why they're Phyrexian goblins. So there might be some way to exploit that, too. Standard players can chime in. So we have one, two, three, four of those. And we have the Koldotha Rebirth. Koldotha. I'm just kidding. I really don't know how that's pronounced. I think it's Koldotha. As an additional cost to cast Koldotha, 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 sacrifice an artifact, put three 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens onto the battlefield. So that's very good. Our whackers can bump those up and give them haste. So very quickly, um, we can be turn three, maybe nine hasty bumped up goblins. Um, and then with a goblin banner man to go with them, I think, uh, yeah, we could probably do like a turn three, 20 damage, turn three kill. Haven't done it yet, but, um, running four Kuldatha rebirth there. All right. Now here's, look at the artwork there. Oh, tickle me fancy. We have goblin grenade. Sacrifice a goblin to have goblin grenade deal five damage to one target. So that's definitely going to be. 90% of the time is going to be our opponent. And um, right here, one, two, three, four. There's four of those, so that's 20 damage. Um, turn two, let's say we have six goblins, 
Three of these in our hand. With the mana, we can go boom, boom, boom. Sack Goblin, 15 damage. Similarly, right here, Shrapnel Blast. Now, not quite as good. This is the artwork I like on this one. So I was only able to get two of these. Um, however, uh, Shrapnel Blast, sacrifice an artifact. It's not necessarily what we want to do with our artifacts, but it'll deal five damage to target creature or player. So that's tough. So we are running one, two, a three of those. And there's the one, so I know which one to sideboard. That's the one that'll end up in the sideboard. I like to do that. Some people think it's weird, but we can sideboard this um, for something. So check it out. I found some nice places to put some of my fancy lands again in this budget deck. All right. So we have Hamburger Land. Um, this is a land of ground beef and meatloaf. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Now, Den of Bugbear? Sure. Um, could put some fetches in here if you wanted to maybe put some Dragon's Rage Channeler action. I don't think it really helps with what we're doing, but... Dragon's Rage Channeler is always a good card. So there's 16 lands there. Seems to be a good number. So let's talk about the sideboard. Oh, look at it. Remember I said we had a playset of the Pile Driver. So the Goblin Pile Driver. Got that protection from blue. Now we have Smash to Smithereen, so we can hate on other people's artifacts too. Destroy target artifacts. Smash to Smithereens deals damage to that artifact's controller. One, two, three. I like three for sideboard options, because three, you're not going to be flooded with them, and you're not going to not get it in your hand when you want it. So three is a great number for sideboard options. So we have three lightning bolts for those creature-heavy decks. Now, this could be Alpine Moon. Um, I think Void Mirror would be good in here. Um, I'm using Blood Moon right now, because... I think this deck's good enough to warrant a better card in it. And I'll probably upgrade this deck a little bit more as we move on through the year. Um, so we have two Blood Moon as our enchantments, because that three mana costs. That's... All right, Pithing Needle enters the battlefield. Choose a card name. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So we have two of these, and that's going to beautifully shut down fetch lands. You can almost run a play set of these in here um, just because it's so effective at shutting down fetches. So we have Tormod's Crypt. It's a zero artifact. We tap it. We sacrifice it. We exile a graveyard. We have one, two of those. And because we're always casting red spells, we're running two of these Dragon's Claws. Whenever a player casts a red spell, you may gain one life. So... Most of the time, if this is going in our deck, it's because a player is playing red also. But because we're solely a red deck, um, it's good for us too. Even though, even though, I will say I like to just sideboard this into the deck when it's a red opponent or like a burn. Because there is a lot of colorless things in this deck. So it's not always going to trigger. So we want, I want some help to trigger it. So that is our sideboard and there is the deck and what we are going to do is we are going to do some gold fishing with this um in a little bit here i think and uh, i'm going to show you guys what you can do with the deck and i uh, will discuss it a little bit so join me there thank you so much for joining me um really appreciating uh the messages and all that and uh those of you uh, who contacted me through my email at lizardsofthetoast at yahoo.com. Um, go ahead and uh, look in your mailboxes because we got some fun stuff coming for you. Bang. It's already ready to rock and roll. So you lucky three, sir, sir, and ma'am, you guys enjoy the cards. And uh, go ahead and leave a comment when you get them. Make your own video saying, look what the lizard man gave us. He gave us the stankiest, jankiest things I've ever seen. So join me for the next one, and we will go in, and I'll show you just what kind of damage we can kick out with this dirty, dirty deck.